I need to bring him in. Yeah. Uh, yeah, because he's going to ask you some questions. I got a surprise Come on. Oh, okay. I got a surprise guest for you. Oh, okay, that's what's so, up. So, so we always, we, we we run surprises on people yeah. in here. Come on in, man. Yeah, I got a surprise <laughs> guest. Yeah, I got, I got a surprise yeah, co-host. He come in and ask these questions that yeah. I ain't going to ask. You Hello, know? Ronnie. Yeah, he I, he never know who he going to interview either. He don't even know. Yeah. You don't never know. He never know, but he come a lot. You know what I'm saying? Man, like, that's crazy, Because it's bro. Dallas, man. Yeah. We got show love. I just feel like my show different because I always come with a harder, you know, like, like I got to ask these questions. I ain't gonna know some questions he gonna know yeah he gonna ask some things i might not ask what's up baby yeah, what's going on baby? how you doing man bobby sessions man we got a platinum record together. let's talk about it let's talk about it that's what this is man did you know that no i didn't that's all why right. but god, know, did. Yeah. god did god did ah! God did for real <laughs> so man for like real. like like okay what's the name of the song let's talk about that move up Okay, Move up. how did y'all? How did y'all even come together to do it? I can't. I, I got on it with Jay White, probably the same way. Yeah, you yeah, same way. yeah, Jay yeah. White. Yeah, so yeah, I, I, I seen another dude named Jay White. I was upset because it was on. They was on Angela Yee's show or something. Yeah, and it was yeah. a Jay White. I'm like, this nigga don't went. What is he doing? He but look, Ronnie both been brought this nigga to me. I do. I do. I do. Still got to bring him. <laughs> I know he yeah. coming. He he always looking at the stuff and always showing support. But I got a last minute call on on that record, so I don't know. Really? When I, when I looked in, I saw Bobby name on the, in the back office. I was I like. That's out. crazy. How did you get Yeah, up? so um so me and Jay White went to Atlanta, linked up with Lotto. We uh cut the record saying Lotto, she she like super she's super smart too. She be coming up with shit like super quick or whatever. And then we cut some shit to it. We was like, man, this shit is crazy or whatever. So a couple months go by, I get a call from Jay White. He like, yo, I'm finna send you some shit. And I hear fucking Gucci Mane's very I'm like, oh shit, it's <laughs> crazy. And Gucci Mane is like her favorite rapper. Yeah, 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 yeah. So that was like that would been like me getting Jay Z on a record. That's, that's what all, that's what that that's was for her. For her. Mm -hmm. And then um I think after Gucci put his verse on it, I think she added another some other shit on it, like an, like she wanted another part on it. And then I think that's when the Ronnie came, came in, in and in. then like yeah. they but, took the shit up from there and then it became like Wow. Let me ask you this. Like like how I mean when you guys are doing this though, you guys don't know that this is for to be a big record. Y'all know it. You got a feeling. That's what we know. shooting for. Yeah, I mean, I, that's what yeah, we shooting for. I would, in my head, the first the since it has the sample, the, it was a hit the first time. Mm -hmm. So yeah. I'm like, it's got to be a hit. Like it, it has to be. Like man, like because like, he actually he's had hits before this. Of course. So of it's course. like so if he on there and Jay White then had hits. I'm it, like, it's, it, it, it's a no brainer. I got to bring in what you know. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, that's two bring people that hadn't had, had hits wow. already. So, you guys, man, y'all, you know, I always say that, you know, because you keep mentioning your manager, Dot. What? J Dot. J Dot. Yeah. Okay. I I didn't know him before I started meeting, you know, Haggerty, Trey, Trey Haggerty, and, yeah. and these other guys. Like, he's in Dallas. I'm going to interview him, too. Me and him already talked about this. Yeah. Because I told him you got to, I really don't do people without doing the behind the scenes. You know how I am. I'm crazy. I'm going to ask yeah. for what you least expect. Yeah, you know? what makes the shit Yeah, like sell. I want to see everything. Yeah, I'm trying to put sell. a puzzle together here. I want to see everything and make the, 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 the wheel click. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? So, like how important was he to your career? Because you talk about him. What? You said his name like a lot of times in this interview. Yeah, because I'm big on... Showing respect and love. Showing respect, like he put me on. That was that's that's the that's the only person in the business other than Paul Rosenberg, but really J Dot. And I met Paul through J Dot. It's like J Dot is the only person that could even position himself like my big bro or some shit. Like in in that sense, like it's OGs, and then it's somebody that like really put me on, showed me the ropes, and taught me about the music business. And that he was, believed in you. Yeah. What. And that's the whole game. That like, changed like the whole trajectory of my life for real. Cause yeah. when you performing in Deep Elm and all that type of shit, like you don't really, you have your talent, you have your beliefs, mm -hmm. but you don't necessarily know what's going on. You mm -hmm. might know how local sh shows work or how to sell some merch and things, but you don't know how like the business work. Yeah. Like yeah. record contracts and publishing and all of this type of stuff. You don't really know how that works and you just fishing for information and you got people that cap so much that you don't know they can talk like they <laughs> like connected in a certain way or that they got a certain type of information and you find out when the rubber meet the road 
It ain't what that is. Ain't no road that they can lead you to. Mm-hmm. And that's crazy. And he was the he was the first person I saw that he didn't sell me like a dream. All the information was was practical. Yeah, it was very practical. Like I told you earlier in the interview, he told me when, the first time we spoke was like five hours over the phone, and he was like, "There's no magic red button that I that's can push hard. that's gonna get you from here to here." This going to take some, this going to be a grind, especially with the type of music that you make, you're ahead. So it's going to take time for people to catch, catch up, up to this. So mm-hmm. it was three years before I got to Def Jam. When I got shortly after I signed to Def Jam, he was like, it's probably going to take you five to six years after this to pop. Wow. He told me that in 2018. It's going to probably take you five to six years because you, you're too ahead. So it's going to take people as a whole time to catch up to where you at. How important was it to hear those words as you traveled your journey? Uh, it's priceless. One, because even given that advice is you saying that you feel comfortable making a bet now based on the value of what something's going to be later. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. you, so I already, you're already revealing that your mindset is think is a long-term one. Wow. When did you first hear a Bobby session? Man, I've been knowing, I've been doing <laughs> shows with Bobby maybe it been what? Yeah, I'm like almost a decade. Got to yeah, be. We spoke, really? We spoke yeah. at a like Cedar Hill High School or something. Like that's hard, 20, man. 16, 17. Yeah. Been a, but we knew each other before that. Before but, that, yeah. But wow, yeah. I got to watch him operate there. Yeah. That was the first time you got. No, nah, I got yeah. to watch him. You know, feel them kids and 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 and, and just take the room. You feel yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. I'm like, oh yeah, he got it. How important is was it to 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 be able to go to those high schools or go to those type of events? I actually went to see the hill. Really? That's so, right. Yeah. You yeah, went to crazy. the school. Yeah. I actually went to the school, and the, and the kids that they had us talking to was the kids that was troubling. Yeah. The school, you know, it <laughs> yeah, was the yeah. kids that needed to be, you know, a word. They needed a that word. word, so we went up there, and, and then they let us walk around the school after that too, like go in classrooms and things of that nature. So that was cool, just. Yeah. To, just to, to, to know, I would I would have been one of them kids in that room listening to this man talk and listening to me like exactly. who would have thought? You see what I'm saying? Yeah, Crazy. yeah. And that's the first time I got to feel like his superstardom. Like really? Ah, oh, bro. When they like, was it like periods or whatever? When they're in and they, and they go in their next class, they saw this man, bro. It went crazy. Ah! Like screaming. Wow, and like, oh, bro. It was like Dope. every every hallway we went, like man was like drawing the crowd like they knew they knew who he was already is this still happening today yeah for sure i mean yeah. it, it, do we have artists that's going to these schools that's getting that to, is little earl and people like that doing i just those seen things? earl do lincoln yesterday okay morning. So, yeah, so, it, so it's still going down what's going on yeah and that's the big thing how, how important is that though for 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 a new artist to hit those type of you know that's, that's usually where your love for music start in school so right. to, to see artists that are either be, that are being successful in it or out grinding in it to see them and, and, and just in their work environment and hear hear just little tips and tools of the trade while they there that's that type of stuff push you when you, especially when you're in school because in school you know man life ain't there yet yeah yeah right I, they watching this and they be like man you don't know my life no i'm telling you as a child yeah you ain't, you don't have no responsibility. Go be as great as you can, and because until put yourself in position till by the time that responsibility hit, you'll be, you'll be just like already like just sharp, like mm-hmm. yeah. especially men, bro. I try to tell women are they 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 mature quicker. Yeah. Men play too long, yeah, in yeah. life, yeah. And then when they wake up, it be almost like at that point where they gotta wake up, yeah. yeah. Some gotta shake them up. Mm. Be like, nah, man, start early. Start early, man. Yeah. Yeah, and and what's the what, what's the, and and this go for either one of y'all like, um, what's the most incredible thing that you've seen from a fan that was younger like that that you were like, dang man, that they you know they they kind of stuck with you. They may have to think mm-hmm. on it a little bit. Yeah, I have to think from on a younger. Fan? Yeah, from a younger fan that that seen you guys that that they were so impressed. You was impressed with something that they done or something that they said. You know. I get impressed all the time. That's what's crazy. Yeah. Yeah, no, no, I get it. People I get wow it. me. I get it. Yeah, just, I guess the main thing for me is your music or your messaging, making somebody feel safe enough to be vulnerable with you to tell you exactly what's going on in their life. That's all. That's all. Like, I get but it. But I mean, they telling you though, like this to, to, to the, when the days are dark, they're telling you and crazy detail how dark it is and how your music or your messaging is helping them get towards the light at the end of the tunnel that's like very, that's always the stuff that like 
get you um choked up. That's some powerful stuff, man. Yeah. And I mean, I had Pokey Bear on here, and he a Southern soul artist, but he talked about he cried for a minute there because he talked about a, a, a six no eight year old that called him before he had brain cancer. Mm -hmm. And he called him, and he was dancing to his music. Now you gotta understand, this Southern soul. It's like, this is wild. And then you turn around and you look at it, and then he come out of surgery. The first thing he do is say, "I love you, Pokey Bear," and send him another video, bro. And it's like, you never see this kind of stuff. You know what I mean? You, I'm not thinking that when I'm thinking of son. I'm thinking they dealing with the older people, man. Yeah. I'm not thinking about no kids, bro. But music has a way of. It doesn't. It's not racist to any situation, prejudice toward any age. It yeah. can it can affect any color. Yeah, it breaks down culture barriers, bro. Yeah, that's why I tell people when you being an artist, try to be true to who you is because you leaving an implement of yourself out here. And in a hundred yeah. years, when you no longer here, a lot of people gonna try to put two and two together to build the person of who they think you are based off of your songs. Right. So try to have your songs as closest to your personality if that's what you pushing. Right. Yeah. If you want to be comfortable and you want to have a longevity in it, your music got to be closer to your personality so people can feel like it's not a character they getting. They right. getting you. So when they come up to you, they like you said, they're going to be genuine. They're going to yeah. tell you this, that, and other because they feel like they connect with you. Now, there's artists out here that are really good at putting on the act. And like Dang. he said, talk well. And sometimes that's their strength. Because mm -hmm, mm -hmm. everybody got strengths and, and weaknesses in this. Yeah. yeah. You know what I'm saying? So Why do y'all think that... Uh, like when you look at, say, Louisiana, you got Birdman and Master P down there. You look at Houston, you got Jay Prince. You look at Dallas, you hadn't seen that that person that 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 pretty much created something to where it's a label feature, looking like, hey man, we got something here that was very, and we know the talent is here. Uh -huh. You see what I'm saying? Why do you think that 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 pinnacle, that that person, or that that or that brand haven't erupted here in Dallas? Um, I feel compared to the two people that you just mentioned. Three. Or the two areas you mentioned. I okay, say. got it. Yeah. Got it. <laughs> um, I think, oh yeah, you said Birdman, Master P, and then. Because uh, that's uh, kind of the way that I, those are people who went in and got, you know, deals. Mm -hmm. But when they got their deals, they got a partnership. And it was a different time. That's that's it's gonna be the first thing I said. I think it was a different time. I think the time is different. I think just with uh trying to and you've seen, I mean, just over the past week, there's different articles and information coming up coming out about how difficult it is for new artists to break through. Cause it's just a different time. Like mm -hmm. it's a different time. Like back in the day, you had to have like some actual money to go record and distribute your music. Now, if you got a laptop, some Wi-Fi, you get TuneCore or something, you can just put stuff out. So there's just so much stuff out and people's attention spans are so split that it's hard to just set up shop in one place and get all the people from one place when all of their styles, they somebody could be from Louisiana, but they influence from Atlanta music, New York music, LA music. Like back in the day, people from Louisiana sounded like they was from Louisiana. People mm -hmm. in Houston sounded like they was from mm -hmm, Houston. Mm -hmm. So all the, the the demographic in that area all resonated with the sound that was being made for the people there, from the people there, for the people there, by the mm -hmm. people there. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And now, it's just, a, I think it's more difficult to- Social media. Yeah, to establish that. Like you said, <laughs> social media, like the distractions. Like, I'm listening to a new artist song while I'm scrolling on Twitter, while I'm watching the game, while I'm having a conversation. Wow. So, but can we redevelop in this time? Is there something that hadn't been created yet? You know, when I look at, like I said, the thing that stuck out to me and their friend, they've been, some of them been on the show, all of them follow me, Country Wayne, them, they was able to change the game. Yeah. Make him crazy money every month off of a cell phone absolutely there is there something we're missing where music can become a thing to where it can be spiraled on internet to where it can change the algorithm of the way people are dealing with uh, uh the way they the way they pretty much embrace the music i definitely think so you see what i'm saying i just i just don't you feel where i'm coming a, from it's just not gonna look how it looked back then correct but, well, I'm, but I'm not even but, asking for that I, yeah but yeah that definitely can happen i think in some ways it is happening like people are going to find different ways to monetize not just the music but the the personality mm -hmm. behind the music and people i think people are doing that in certain ways like when you got rappers that 
they maybe had pe- peaked out, but there's still such a demand for their audience to see them in some kind of capacity. Like somebody like T Grizzly can go make a hundred thousand dollars a month for people to watch him play Grand Theft Auto. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. But that's still the foundation of that interest was still built on him doing music. Damn. Like yeah. I think it just and I think how if somebody's trying to build a conglomerate in a certain area, they just have to have a a. F- ref- uh, updated and refreshed perspective on what those reven- new revenue streams are going to be at this time and where things are going. Yeah. I think that's most that's certainly possible. But somebody just got to see themselves through the transitions of AI and the audience getting more and more distracting and distracted and figuring out interesting ways to capture that audience atti- attention around the music. I think that's real. What do you think? You- <sighs> <laughs> I'm just saying that, that, that this new thing, this new way, because we we can ride on the fact that time has changed. But how yeah. do we do something to develop our greatness in the internet world? Like you just stated, that yeah. that that was a great uh, explanation on it. Mm-hmm. The fact that one could be a gamer and do something else, and still all of this combined create something new. Yeah, but it don't even just necessarily have to be that. It can be something else. That's how much I think the. We can't get caught up in the way it was. Now, right. We can't you, get caught up in the way it is. It, things are moving so the, fast. The yeah. music is just a vehicle to whatever else you want to do. Exactly. Yeah. Now, if all you want to do is music, be good at it. Yeah, yeah. Let yeah. it bleed and just, you got to sweat music. Yeah. Other than that, if you got other things going on, once you get in that position, you're going to start trying to do other things with whatever leverage you have. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As in anything that, like, like take me as a boss talk, I see we got on the come up boss talk. Right? Already. But you always want to keep on yeah, breaking yeah, yeah, down yeah. brackets if that's in you. If you Live have layers. From the studio audience is coming, baby. Don't see you what I'm trip. saying? Right. right here, we hear right. it first. It's coming. Yeah. It's going to be what, the studio yeah. setting. Y'all going to be like, what the hell just happened? That's yeah. what I like about certain artists. Like, you you get them layers. Mm-hmm. Like, right. plies and, and gates in them. Like, they ain't got to do no music no more. They done made their personalities now. Then I gave them another four years. Yeah, yeah. yeah transparency yeah. And, and just transitioning. Is you got to keep hard. transitioning. Yeah. yeah, I think that's a lie, bro. I think that's where it's at. I think there are things out there for us that we can recreate and reinvent, but we mm-hmm. can't. We can't fear. Once again, we walk right yeah, up yeah, to that place. Of, with it. You got to be able to say, "I know this look crazy." Yeah. Even though my people came in the store and say, "What the hell you doing putting that?" stuff in your store why them girls in your store man why you got all these people coming over to your store doing this that ain't got to do with clothes i heard that a lot Mm -hmm. but i'd have never got boss talk if i'd have listened to everybody i'd have never had this here right because they said this was not what are you doing the people who have been coming in for years you can't go by what everybody else doing you got to be able to go past what everybody thinking because you the one put this here you got to follow god's vision man god's vision is so important about what you're doing because they looking at your situation not having all the information with their two eyes Mm -hmm. but you following something past your eyes literally like something you can't see yeah like with your eyes but you see it in here and i think if anybody is going to bet on them, themselves, it's a requirement. Like it's like part of like military. Like you go through hell week. Mm-hmm, like mm-hmm. your hell, you're, you're gonna have hell years as an entrepreneur <laughs> betting on yourself and people looking at you like this. Dude, you was tripping. Like mm-hmm. this is a waste of time. You wasting money. You wasting all that. You you could have pivoted to this and this this and this. And if you're not willing to look crazy, then this ain't for you. Wow. And no, there's never successful people telling you this. The successful people that have taken chances and taken losses and things of that nature, they'll never try to give you that information. That's so true. It's only the people that's scared to jump out there yep. on their own. That's it. Right. They're going to tell you everything that's, that's, that's that they that see wrong. Yeah. yeah. It's like, what you do, though? That's hard. You know what yeah. I'm saying? But it's the truth because that's who it was. That's it's always that's exactly. Them. Who but yeah. them be the people that we love. We love. They them. care them about us too because yeah. they, yeah. they they don't want to. They want. They try. They scared for you. Yeah. When right. you really think about it. Yeah. But that's not always a good thing. But you got to, it's, and it's up to you to have the discernment to know like, okay, you're just because your intentions are good for me, that mm-hmm. don't mean you had the correct information mm-hmm. that's going to serve me. That's real. That's real. Like, and you got to be able to s- separate. It's like, well, my intentions, you don't think I'm thinking of your best interests. I'm like, yes, you're thinking of what you believe my best interest is based on the information you have at your disposal. That's that doesn't real. necessarily mean that that's the best information that's going to get me from point A to point B. Mm-hmm. So I can still love you and appreciate you, but mm-hmm. know that I'm going to trust this information that I got and live with the results from that. Man, you know, Nipsey Hussle, I met him, but I met him 
in Vegas, but I remember seeing him on, it was a show he was doing with Gary V. I yeah. don't know if y'all know, you know, you yeah. heard of Gary Vaynerchuk? Yeah. Gary V is a one who basically was talking to him about just how fast technology and how things are moving. Yeah. And they was talking about somebody going to figure it out and do a song a week. A song, you know, yeah. the more you putting yourself out there, the better it was going to be because you driving this. The same thing we doing now, trying to figure it out, how we want to romantically lay it out there so people can see it and, and appreciate it. Mm -hmm. He was saying somebody's going to figure that out and just lay, lay, down, lay it down every week. Yeah. You know, do you think that would work? It's worked. Like, artists like Russ have done it. Mm -hmm. He dropped a song on, uh, like, through TuneCore, one a week for, like, two, three years. Mm -hmm. Wow. And then that's how he blew up. And he blew up. He blew up. So it does work. Singles. Singles. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow. So like, you, that strategy definitely can and has worked. Do you think that's a, a thing now that, because a lot of times people just put out singles. They don't even put out no whole projects a yeah. lot of times. You, you see this a lot. Yeah. And sometimes it throws me out because I'm so old school. Yeah. I ain't, I'm, I'm used to seeing a whole project come through. I see. I, I, but the mixtape era kind of. I broke out yeah. of, like, when I started doing singles, it was only because I was doing mixtapes and doing whole projects. And I was like, I think I'm working backwards. Mm -hmm. I think I'm I think I'm think putting too much on people's plate and I don't, and I don't have nobody to eat. Yeah. So mm -hmm. what I did was I started dropping singles and they brought a fan base. Then I started back dropping projects so they can hear it. Yeah. Right. Like I feel like a lot of people come straight in the game with projects trying to do like like I, I, how I do it. Each song to me is a campus. Okay. And a lot of artists, we real sensitive. But if you can get over somebody seeing this right here and not knowing that you got another one and another one. Yeah. Like they not they they gonna judge just this one, but this this might be their first time seeing this this poster. You see yeah, what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like nah, this is just one can this is one painting. I got another one over here that is another feeling. Like don't judge me off this one. If, yeah, if you don't yeah, like yeah. this one, I'm an artist. I got different different right everything you need, but you gotta build up that following and I tell people come with them singers first because you can build a core like they can get like a feel for you it's like feeling it's like boxing they gonna feel you out mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. like damn he jamming okay he okay he put something else out of that jam too oh uh, he, he done put out eight songs and everyone jam i listen to this project wow more yeah. so than hey bro check me out this is my mixtape like you know, if i've never seen you or heard of you before i don't want to hear 12 songs of you i'm sorry i don't yeah wow. that's fair one you, you same way uh you can win me over in and, 30 seconds and, uh, i have a similar mindset i would say like i think you got to play to your strengths. Like I think if you if you got like hit making ability, I think the singles route is probably the best route. Mm -hmm. And then you have people like um you familiar with Griselda? Mm, no. Okay, that's um it's like a I probably heard the song. Yeah, it's it's a collective out of Buffalo, New York. It's okay. like it's like West Side Gun, Benny the Butcher. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 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 Benny yeah. the Butcher. Oh, yeah. yeah, so they're part of this collective called Griselda or whatever. So their thing, they don't they don't make songs with hooks. Mm -hmm. They don't make like radio leaning records or nothing like that so they mass dropped projects kind of like mixtape style they wasn't like conceptual projects where everything is flowing like this one theme or whatever but they would put a bunch of song the songs would be like two verses or it'd be like three three people rapping on one song they all got 16s and that's the song and they just drop like three or four projects a year so it's still high volume but they're doing high volume of projects as opposed to high volume of singles I but it, i think each each route works if that's what your strength is because you can't just put out singles if you're not good at making singles mm -hmm. if you but if you just got if you're treating like in your example if your canvas is i got a bunch of songs where i'm rapping over a bunch of different beats and that's the canvas and you can crank them out at a high speed then do that if your thing is like like you said like i got this canvas and I got a strong hook and something that's gonna get a certain reaction and it might be best for you to do the single and work that and then put out another single and work mm -hmm. that and then get out another single and work that where you're building up the audience that wants to hear the full wants to hear that, yeah. project. Uh, Tech Nine had a different way of doing it too. Yeah. He was he but he figured, came in another era too. Yeah, he figured it out and in they his came era with too. Him. They yeah. came with him. They still rock with him. Yeah. Oh man. I went to a tech <laughs> nine I went to a tech nine show. It was one of the most interesting things I've ever seen. <laughs> Why is it so interesting? I just never seen that type of audience. Like that the audience of the people, like what they was wearing and they was having like masks on and mm -hmm. like 
Man, it was some different shit. Like, it was like, <laughs> I remember this was like 2016 set at a, a Gas Monkey. And I'm like, I just, I need to see this. They was coming to oh. this store trying to buy his stuff. They Packed. were coming here because oh. they see that picture on the wall with me and Tech. Mm-hmm. And Tech 9, that picture been here since 09. So they see it and they're coming, like, you know him? I'm like, I met him. They're yeah. like, you, I need his clothes. You couldn't get his stuff. Me, I go everywhere. I go to Cali, Vegas, Atlanta, wherever, looking for these clothes. But you had to go to his website, Man. so he figured it out early. Packed. He figured it out it early. Was packed. And probably his mask they were. <laughs> yeah. It was his stuff. Yeah. yeah. For sure. And probably. then he performed with a mask and he, you know, his his styles, you know, that fast rap. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Three, four syllable rhymes mm-hmm. and all dark that. in there too. Oh yeah. Oh, it was dark. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> My buddy was getting busy. He was getting busy. How, did you enjoy it? Yeah, I enjoyed it. Okay. Yeah, it was just I just ain't seen nothing like that. Nothing like that it. was just the first time I seen that. And that was the first time I seen somebody be dominant with their merch. Mm-hmm. That's the part oh, right bro. there. Cleaning up, bro. It's, How, bro and you, 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 you know that's important. You said earlier that your mom would sell your merch. How important is it to you now? Do you still push the merch, or do you still come Absolutely. up with, with ways to be strategic with your, you know, with your merchandise? Because yeah. that's important, man. It is. You gotta, I mean, it's hard sometimes, especially for for artists. Like that's one of the main ways you're gonna make money. Like mm-hmm. your, your merch, your merchandise, and your performance fees. And if somebody Somebody is more than likely gonna buy your stuff online if they saw you live and bought something first in person. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. And they, cause they like they saw it and they felt the energy and they know the messaging and they 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 really connected to it. So that's a great way. Like so, if if you go to see Tech Nine for example and he rapping and he rapping in a style of how you want to hear people rap, and then he got the merch that sounds like the, like like the merch looks like how the music sounds. Mm-hmm. Everything is like black, white. Red, all mm. them like the like just little stuff like that. All the T's either black, white, and red, in some capacity. And like people, they just man, it just wow. Work. That's and that's and that's a marketing strategy. That's well, all that stuff cult. built up. You got a cult, like a that's cult a cult. Yeah. Okay, I got I got a question because I always okay. wanted to know because I got I got my own method of way I break down the the songwriting thing. Yeah, like people will hear the songs that you wrote on, and it ain't even close to what they would oh, get what? from Bobby Sessions. Right. What, what, how do you, cause I, I try to give this game to all the, the people that want to write. They be like, man, I don't know how to, I don't know how to dumb it down. I'm like, bro, if you consider yourself smart, you should be able to dumb yourself down. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And you do it well. Cause I didn't hear other songs yeah. that's, that ain't out that right. just reference in. It don't, it ain't, it ain't, that Bobby says it ain't. It <laughs> right. ain't. All right. So where do you draw from when you dig dig in that pot? You see what I'm saying? Yeah, that's a great question. I think for me, so if I know I'm gonna work with someone, the first thing I would do, I go watch all their interviews. Wow. All their interviews, so I get a feel of who this person is, and then from there I listen to like maybe their last two releases, whatever that is, like two bodies of work. So I go, okay, this is what this person generally likes to say. This is what this person is generally about. If and then I do like a visualization exercise where I imagine being in the car, hearing them on the radio. What could I hear from them that would blow my mind and Ooh. then make that? Mm-hmm. Wow! So wow. it's like that's that's like the formula. Like I literally imagine like what could I hear that would be like? Oh my god, it's crazy! Yeah. And then think in that space. Like I literally will imagine being in the car. I imagine being seeing the radio I imagine the shit be turned up all the way I imagine me being like this is the craziest shit I ever heard from her like what does mm-hmm. that sound like what does that feel like what is that production like what could this person say like a punchline or something and then I just down like on some matrix shit like this shit just like fall down like the lyrics fall down <laughs> and then I go cause it's hard, it's, it's hard. hard. What, what he's saying it, it, to do that is harder than what people think cause oh, it's man. like when you say what can they say that's hard he not saying what he can say some anything that's hard because that's just what you do. But you yeah. saying what can they say that's hard, but it's gonna be re- it's gonna still be realistic, right? To their fan base, yeah. like because when you writing, it's, it's it's like it's it's a task, bro. How do you go there? It's a task, bro. Yeah, it's hard. It's a real Rubik's like cube. It can be. It's a Rubik's cube. Yeah, you For really real. trying to understand where you want to take it. For this, cause this is a request that they've already requested. Are no. they looking? Are you just trying? Do you even know who's gonna get it when you're doing it? Sometimes, most of the time, you don't. Am I? You don't. You don't. Or uh, like, like Savage, uh, oh. did you know that you didn't know? No, it, no. 
like when it was made no like i was i made it for someone else and they passed on it and then that's it man that's that's just man that's god and, bro. That's god. Nah, yeah. man. and then like i said and then you hear and again it's like and this is what that's what gets weird with the rap shit. Like I said, with producers, it's commonplace to make the best beat that you get two, three, four of the most talented people to come together to make something. But with rap, it gets super weird. But who who's ever diminished Denzel Washington's great greatness if when you see a movie he didn't write every word in the script? It's like, man, Denzel, is you really that nice? Who would do that? Because that would be dumb to do. Yeah. Because it's, I mean, you can write. The craziest stuff in the world but if the person don't it's a skill to deliver something mm -hmm. mm. like you can't take drake's lyrics and have somebody else rap it and it sound like drake or it sound like drake's greatness or you could take that the, the savage like that hook and have somebody else rap it it's not gonna sound like how meg cut it because she got you gotta be special you gotta have it or and then somebody can hear something and then decide like okay like some artists they use something you do and they just use it as like a muse and then they decide okay like sometimes it's hard to just start like if you already got a like if you think of like that first line and them first two lines you normally got the momentum to mm -hmm. finish out a hook or to finish out a verse mm -hmm. but sometimes it's you hearing a beat and you know you fit perfect on that beat but for some reason you can't think of how to start that that perfect initiation this perfect initiation so sometimes you just need to hear just something and, and then it click like you might not even use no them lyrics. You might not use that pattern, but you just hear something, and now you can do what you need to do. And Kanye, he's been great at that. But that's why his catalog is so crazy, because college dropout and late registration and late graduation, 808s and heartbreaks into goddamn My Beautiful Dark Twisted Fantasy into Watch the Throne into Yeezus and all these classic bodies of work. It's a whole bunch of the... You got a great mind. 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 And take all the fucking egos and put them shit at the door. We're here to make greatness. We want to make something where literally your grandkids can be like, this shit still slap. This is still special. Why would, who would, why do you need to be 100% responsible for, I made, I wrote all of the lyrics and I made the whole beat and I, I engineered it myself and I marketed myself and I, and that's cool and sometimes you gotta do that but acting like that's some fucking badge of honor it's is not. some bullshit. <laughs> but people do it though. People, people act as if they don't want people to know that somebody wrote this or somebody helped with this. This is happening. This is a real but that's thing. Cause, oh, that's because that was the game prior. Prior. And people still think like if, if someone and finds it, it's gonna be all this like backlash it's like man fuck them niggas cause <laughs> nah for real cause uh I'm sorry saying it but <laughs> you okay uh <laughs> I got two turns but it's all love baby. but it's like for real it's like you have people that if if you go online and, and you put your stuff out and let's say you had a hundred comments 97 of them this is so great this nobody even reads the fucking credits <laughs> Like who read? Only no, people read the credits is other credit. people in the business. Nobody I is hearing a song from Mariah Carey. Like let me I read swear. the credits. Who did the cello and the damn? Nobody give a fuck about that shit. Nobody. Nobody cares about that except other people in the business and these fan bases for different artists is so competitive and it's such a toxic little world mm. that if they gonna pull it up, bro. If you got an artist over here and their fan base and this artist supposedly has a problem with some other artist that fan base they'll look at the credits and be like who, who worked on this and who did this like who gives a who, who cares <laughs> yo you think jeff jeff bezos don't own a hundred percent of amazon elon musk don't own all of tesla mm -hmm. that like literally when we talk about michael jordan and lebron yeah, james yeah. you can people have a preference but what i do know as a fact is i ain't never seen Neither one of them hoop without four other people with on the, the same court. jersey on. That's real. I ain't right. never That's seen real. it. I ain't, I ain't never seen it one time <laughs> in my life. But but and all the other of a dudes don't get no credit, bro. What? Have None of them. They cancel them out, don't you? You seen some great movies in your lifetime, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You seen the credits at the end? 
Hell yeah, long. I've seen, seen them, but okay. I, yeah, but that, that, I don't that list, read them. That list long as shit. I might <laughs> read the first one or two, and I'm out that old way. <laughs> second, assist, second assistant cameraman, the nigga that brought some snacks in, oh, the God. person that goddamn casted the people. <laughs> that, that, you done heard two or three whole songs just during the credits. You just see a black screen and a bunch of names that you ain't gonna, ain't read. gonna read. But to that world, everybody be like, you saw I was the second was, camera. <laughs> that was, on the, that world, you it's said crazy. it. But all you know, did I like this movie or did I not like the movie? Nobody's looking at a movie with Vi Viola Davis like, did she write all them lines? Exactly. When she cried, you're just looking like, what a performance. What a performance. Yeah. Because that's what matter at the end of the day. Yeah, yeah. But with rap, it's this thing like, if you didn't write every lyric of everything, all of a sudden that I gotta disqualify or artists feel like they're gonna be disqualified by the audience, like they not. Smart or something. I think it was Drake. Somebody who somebody said he wrote for Drake or something. I, I remember somebody that. did. And it, 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 it hit the fan. It hit the yeah. fan. Yeah. When Quinn Miller did, did that, that. what it was. Miller, yeah. It come out. Everybody, everybody came out. Everybody, 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 yeah, everybody. Everybody. Like what the hell just happened? And then they made. It, I would have been mad. The media though. take yeah. that. I was Queen. I would have been mad. I would have been like, man, man, messed my money up. It did. It, <laughs> it, it, it literally derailed his career. Missed my money, huh? Damn. It did. It really you did. You working with the be the biggest artist in the world? I, I don't need I nobody to say know. it was somebody else too. I'm in the back, what was the other girl named that wrote for uh, Carrie Hilson? Wrote for Beyonce or something like that. It was. I'm just thinking of times where people wrote for people. I said they wrote, and then it became an issue. Like nigga, what are you doing? And maybe because they had static too. You know what I mean? But yeah. at the end of the day, it's like a world. Like you, that world you right. were that you like that world values things in a different way than everybody. And it's tough for writers because like a producer, if if you go, you could have produced a song for somebody and you had three other co-producers, but when the record drops, you like, yo, I produced on this. And they and the, and the other three, like, I produced on this. I pro and it's all cool and it's acceptable. And nobody's sitting there like, well, wh what part did you do? Did you, did, you did, the, did you do the drum? Oh, you did the snare? Did you do the melody? Did you play the keys? We just you know you it? produced it with the... So by them being able to promote the fact that they were part of that song, they can get more work. Mm -hmm. With the songwriters, you got to be quiet or you feel like you got to be quiet in some instances. How are you supposed to get more work? Damn. If people don't, so it just, that's a crazy, that's a crazy place to be, cause it, it so you got to be careful who you pick to even work with, because that could shadow you. It, uh, not it, necessarily. I don't think it. Not not today. Not today. Not. I don't sure? even think it's ghost writing these days. I think you're just a writer. I don't think, like he said, yeah, nobody cares, not, but yeah, the people in the back right. that do it. The fans, they don't care. Fans don't unless, care as much that, like no you more. said, they had that, 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 fan, that fan base that come through and try to, you know, degrade the next fan. But oh, they they ain't had they self they ain't write that whole single book. That's what they be doing online. This that another. Yeah. So I know you don't experience that because they probably done threw you in it and you nah, like, bro, oh. I done got tagged and all type of weird. So I know exactly what he's yeah. talking about. Damn, man. Well, I, now I don't, I don't but see you just that. Gotta, like yeah, like. Yeah, he right. Let's talk about emotions, folks. I don't want to forget this because I've, oh, yeah. I've been thinking about it. I'm like, damn, we talked about everything for this last hour and a half, yeah. and we ain't talked about emotions yet. We got to get into that. That's his new. That's your new yeah. song. This that's coming new record yeah. this week. This week, August eighteenth, eight eighteen. Oh man, yeah. So what's let's talk about it. Like, let's get into it. Like, what I know. Hey man, you pulling from somewhere deep when you start messing with H Town, man. H Town, salute to H Town. Emotions make you cry sometimes. All yeah. right, all right, all right. <laughs> Them boys were different, yeah, man. Yeah, it's different. <laughs> so, that's different. Like that's like a real, that's a real cult classic right there. Like what? most people know, knocking the boots. Oh, that you know, was the you know one right that was there. Like, that's like the one. But the emotions one. was. But emotions it, is if a it huge really record. Was into it, emotions is like, a huge like record. You in the H Town? Like that, I, I used to roll with that, bro. Yeah, what? Maybe two, two more after that. Yeah. Then line between love and hate, and but it really wasn't like it wasn't like the them. Them was like the bombs. Yeah, that was, was the, the ones. Yeah, yeah, them was the ones. So yeah. that's how. So what made you reach there and, and even decide to even you know redo that? Yeah. So um, so for this new project, we was we recorded most of it in uh in Nashville. And Nashville just got a different. I can't even explain the vibe. It's just That's like music maker, man, for real. Like it just got a. It's just a vibe in Nashville. I don't even know how to explain it. And um, so this music, like, man, this just feels real powerful. And we need to be super intentional about the things we sample if we're going to sample. Because right now, this is like a, a, a like we're in a sample crisis right now. 
Everybody is sampling the most popular song of his time. They not changing none of the lyrics, nothing <laughs> like nothing. Like, and it's cool to do that every now and then, but like every new release, every Friday, mm -hmm. it's just a redo a comp of some other song. And I'm like, all right, we need to do something like real different that's more obscure, but something that mean a lot. And that was a record that I always thought was dope because the song kind of play out like a like an autobiography. And the original most emotion song is like at the age of 11 i learned about things like god in heaven i like, cried i it, cried <laughs> and at the age of five like he was going he going in so it's like he detailing all of these major moments in his life what that triggers some type of emotion i'm mm -hmm. like okay then how about i take that concept and then go with just the different things in my life right now that makes me emotional Wow, and then we and then we sampled it and chopped it up, and Jada was like, "Man, like, man, you did that emotional. Like, it's gonna go crazy." And then the producers got shot them out. AJ ruined my record. Uh, Scales and Eighty Eight J, oh, he's in Nashville. They just started chopping it up. Then I c cut the verses. Then we did the hook, and then I put this third verse on, and it was crazy. And then we shot a visualizer for it, where in my parents' bathroom, my dad cut my hair off with my daughter, like on the floor, like it was. And it was crazy. Like, it was like a real, and it was something like God told me to do. Like, you need to, this is a new era. Like, the song represents a new era and a new chapter in your life. And when I first started growing my hair out, it was kind of out of rebellion. Yeah. Because I was in that space where I was looking crazy to certain people in my life at the time. Or people that was watching my life from afar, betting on this music shit. And growing my hair out was like doubling down on, I don't care how I look. To nobody that's looking at my situation, Ooh. I know what I'm doing, but I'm at a place now that that's not what's motivating me anymore. So I want a fresh start, and emotional is the is the symbol, is symbolic of this fresh start, turning over a new leaf. Kind man, of man, I think you yeah. got it figured out, man. To have play defining moments in your life to yeah. where you can look back at what you're doing in your artistry and be able to depict where you was at in that time in that era. Yeah. We just talked about time and an era. Mm -hmm. That stuff is so important. Even when you're reading the book, like I read, you know, genealogy and where you came from is right. important. And the way you space it out and how you look at it and how you develop from it yeah. is on a whole nother level. Mm -hmm. whole nother level. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, absolutely. That, all, that, all that matters, bro. And yeah. I think people don't give that enough credit for how mm -hmm. much it matters. Yeah. I mean, you know, I can remember back when you brought your son and he was here and you mean you talked and you you came up with my slogan, you know what mm -hmm. I mean? And mm -hmm. just oh, different crazy. stuff. Oh, we just and as we as we develop, I look back at these slots in time and I look at ways to scale and be better. The same thing that you're talking about. Yeah. You know, but then depicting it and writing it out. It's like writing it out. Yeah. It's the same thing. Like mm -hmm. you figuring it out as you write it out and you going and you like you said you went and got all those books and, and, and you know, oh, read man. them. All that stuff matters, bro. Yeah. You know, it matters in a way to where it can change your life. But a lot of people are so busy trying to figure it out just from here and not not trying to figure out, you know, you got to read. You got to figure out ways to, you know, rejuvenate your mind, bro. Yeah. Because most people don't understand if I want to collectively do something. I, like, I like dealing with YouTube and all these different uh, TikTok, all this stuff. It's cool. But how can I do something greater? Yeah. People are stuck following right now when yeah. you really think about it. Yeah. Run into the next popular thing? Yeah, how yeah. can I figure out how to ride the wave of change? I always say that. Yeah. I want to be on the peak of it. I want right. to be the one bringing it in. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Right. Like, you got people, when Thread which, came which out, like, they were like. Like what he just said is, is, is you consider the crazy one. Yeah. It's when you're doing people's, that. Look, yeah. Lil Ron, it's you something. Crazy you got to be. crazy as first, and then they call you a genius. Then they call you a genius. Later. Yeah. Yeah. Some people still ain't enjoying Thread. I mean, hey. <laughs> I'm just saying, like, like they don't, like, Facebook came out, people, it was like, hell no. I remember when that came out, they like, I'm not getting on there. Right. <laughs> nah, for no, real. I, I, I was on that MySpace. He was on was, MySpace. <laughs> yeah. I got on Instagram late. What what the, what? I was sick of it, because it was just something new coming out. I was like, bro, I'm not doing it. It's going to be another wave right. and out. Yeah. You know, it stuck. I had to get on that one. <laughs> yeah. Same with TikTok. Now yep. and then, and it's going to be another it. one after Gotta that. Be, yep, yep. But you, it just never stops. Speaking of TikTok, before we get off of here, like, like, do you have to have a TikTok banger in this era? No. You can do it without it? You don't have to have a TikTok banger in, in no era. Like he said. What does TikTok do? TikTok can break your record if, if you got the right record yeah. to serve its purpose. Yeah, that's true. You got to have we, the right record. What is this? You I, know what I mean? I'm just, just speaking facts. The, the Savage record that made 
labels mm -hmm. pressure artists to make songs for TikTok. Mm -hmm. Really? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. One thousand like thousand percent TikTok thousand percent. challenges did went nuts. That's one of the biggest songs off the in the history of social media period. And it was based on it was like Sa Savage from Megan Thee Stallion, Say So from Doja Cat. Mm -hmm. Kind of it really started with uh, Renegade from K Camp. That was like the first one where people where you started seeing TikTok stars blow up mm -hmm. and TikTok stars came from them doing dances. Yep. So you would see like uh there's a uh someone named Addison Ray who transitioned to an artist. She was like a super big TikTok star. Or the um I can't even think of the other one. There's one that was like even bigger than her. They <laughs> literally started transitioning from TikTok to getting certain brand deals based on Savage. Like they they were, they posted a dance and it got like 100 million plays like one video and then posted another one wow. like so labels start saying, "Hey, you need to make a song for TikTok." But what happened was so many artists started trying to intentionally make songs for TikTok that in some ways, in a lot of ways it killed out the power that if the song don't pop here, then it can't pop. They and that, and there was a belief for like a little stretch of 18, 24 months with labels that if it wouldn't pop here, it's not going to pop. Mm -hmm. That's just not true. Did you know when you were dealing with Megan that she was like the first Texas female rap artist to blow? i am be honest. I've never thought of that. <laughs> I just That's gave crazy. you so. I'm in there That's talking. You, you know what I mean? I ain't never thought of that. I never thought of that in my life. That's crazy. <laughs> She's yeah. the first one. She's a um. I think when think it's about it. when it's all said and done, when you look at the 2020s, she's gonna be viewed as the most iconic rapper of the 2020s. Iconic female rapper of the 2020s. That's hard, man. We'll end it on that note, man. Shout out to Megan Thee Stallion. Absolutely, uh, man. Uh, man, just uh, man. Thank you for coming on the show, man. How Absolutely. can people get a hold of you? I know you if, if, if they trying to reach out. Yeah, so uh, you can follow me on all social media platforms at Bobby Sessions, B O B B Y S E S S I O N S. Um, and then uh, if you need to, you know, conduct any business, just go to High Standards, and the, the emails will be in the bio. And let's get it. Let's get to Man, it. Man, I was thinking about Coco. I I looked up, and she everywhere. Everywhere. I, he I see me, you. Like, he kept trying to tell my cost. I don't. You know, I'm old. Bobby I, I'm, Platinum. I'm, listen, Bobby he, Platinum, he, he telling me this. He like, man, Coco. I said, okay, yeah. okay. I'm, I'm dumbing it down. Then when I hit the name, I'm thinking, my, no, it would. My brother called me. He said, yeah, yeah. I said, he said some girl, Coco. Yeah. He said, man, you know who that is? I'm like, nah, I don't know that. He started sending me all yeah. these damn things. I said, damn. A breath of fresh air when people. Dope as hell, but I When people were saying R&B is dead and da-da-da-da, it's like, not at high standards. It ain't dead over here. No. Oh, that's hard. About, about to be platinum. That's all. I see you selling out dates on the tour right now. Coco Jones, I see you. You know what I'm saying? It's the restoring the feel, a song that was dominating radio. Damn. It's an example of a song that wasn't, you know, it, it did some shit on TikTok, but, you know, it was, it was, it resonated with people. And so it's like same with TikTok, radio, Twitter, uh, DSPs, it just got to connect with people. Yep. The medium it might change, depend on the song, depend on the artist, but make the song real and authentic to you. Man, I got to ask you this. I just thought about it. I've been asking everybody this. You probably heard it. You was here earlier. Uh, if you was in a place where you couldn't speak for yourself mm -hmm. and somebody was writing a documentary on you, what would you want them to say? One of the key things. Uh, this man is a testimony to what is possible in life if you truly believe in the vision that God gave you. Wow. Man, thank you for coming on the show, man. Thanks for having me. I think we shut it down, Lil Ronnie. Lil Ronnie, man, you man, pulled up. Crazy, bro. That's Check dope, it, man. Bro. It's Love, going bro. down, man. Emotions Friday. Hey, Emotions Friday. Let's most, go, emotion man. Emotions make you cry sometimes. Baby. Check it, man. <laughs> boss Talk 101, man. It's been another great segment, man. A Boss Talk 101. What a boss is talk. Yeah.